it had been the best summer of her life, but also the worst. She had lost so much, but she had found courage, and for the first time, she felt like she had a future. It was time to leave the past behind. She decided to look at the photos one last time. The old woman in the next seat leaned in. Crystal paused for a moment. Did she really know these people? Or was she just making it up on the spot? What if she had answered differently? Would her memories of them change? She tried not to think about it. After all, it was natural for her mind to be scattered, considering what she had been through. The final photograph was the one of her and the boy. Crystal hesitated. She didn't know what to say. He was the reason she had made it this far, but then... Just the thought of it made her nauseous. Then something even more horrible dawned on her. When she saw the eagle, her blood ran cold. A million thoughts rushed through her head. How could she have been so stupid to think she'd just get on a train and get away? She was naive. And now reality caught up with her. This time, she had nowhere to run. After all, she was still the frail little girl she had always been. And he was much too strong. Maybe he was right, Crystal thought. Maybe it was her own fault. But did it really have to end this way? Funny maybe, but thrilling and exciting was a bit of an exaggeration. In fact, the circus had fallen far since its golden days. Over the last couple of years, many performers had left. But who could blame them? After all, they joined the circus expecting adventure. When they learned that the ringmaster refused to travel, they eventually got bored and moved on with their lives. The only performers left were those who had nowhere else to go. The circus was their safe haven. It didn't matter to them that the show was done. They just wanted to escape the real world. Crystal wasn't one of the performers, but she still couldn't leave the circus. If anything, she felt like a prisoner. Sure, the circus was safe, but it was also deadly monotonous. She was tired of hiding from the rest of the world. When would it be her turn for some adventure?
sun touched her skin. She had been blindsided by summer. It was as if Mother Nature had fallen asleep on the job, only to wake up and fast forward several months overnight. For a moment, nothing else mattered. The voice was like a cloud intercepting the rays of light. Then she saw the boy. Crystal knew that opportunities like this don't grow on trees. Maybe this was her only chance to leave the circus. The boy snapped a photo and put it in his pocket. They said their goodbyes for now. Crystal was happy about me. It's not like the others would mind. They probably wouldn't even notice she was gone until they ran out of clean underwear. But she still owed the ringmaster a big one. She decided to give the circus one last chance. Her mind would be made up by the morning. It was time for dinner. She could smell the stew from the caravan. The only thing inside the ticket booth was the footstool the ringmaster used to reach over the counter. That, and a tip jar with two popsicle sticks and a lonely shirt button. Crystal inserted the shirt button into the coin slot. Surprisingly, it fit perfectly and the fortune-telling machine came alive. The fortune-telling machine was open. Well, it did have a coin slot. Crystal had discovered it could also be started with a well-placed slap. Crystal gave it a whack. It always said the same thing. Crystal figured the ringmaster had programmed it. Crystal shivered when she looked at the giant teddy bear. It was supposed to be an obtainable prize back when they had games at the circus, but that was a scam. Now it just stood there, staring at her in the night.
The tall lady's cat was tormenting a pigeon. It hissed when Crystal came close. It wouldn't let her pass. She would need something to shoo it away with. The clown, a man in his best years, he was juggling, dancing and telling jokes all day long. He could put a smile on anyone. Crystal admired him. The clown was busy. It seemed only food could take his mind off juggling. The large ball used to be part of the tamer's performance. But since the tamer left and the lion was released into the wild, the ringmaster forced the cat to balance on top of the ball instead. Crystal almost fitted it. Crystal stared at the daredevil's dusty cannon. He had left the circus to become an accountant. Numbers were more thrilling, he said. Crystal wouldn't know. She never learned math. The door to the stables was locked. Crystal wasn't allowed to enter without supervision. Obviously, the cat couldn't speak, but if it could, it would probably have said something like... When the cat was gone, the bird chirped. Every
Crystal couldn't decipher the name on the envelope. She would have to ask around to find its recipient. The merry-go-round had reminded Crystal of the mechanic who used to live at the circus. The two of them got along well, and the mechanic used to let Crystal ride the merry-go-round after the circus had closed for the day. Now The ringmaster was in a wild argument with a large officer. This was the sheriff. His presence meant trouble for the circus. He was a disciple of the eagle, the tyrant who ruled the country. Their affiliation was official by the emblem he carried on his chest. Before Crystal came close enough to hear their conversation, the ringmaster slammed the door in the sheriff's face. The sheriff pushed Crystal aside and left the circus. It hadn't rained for weeks. There wasn't a single drop of water at the bottom of the well. The well-dressed lanky woman was prima donna Luciana Valentina Scorticini. Crystal called her the tall lady for simplicity. She when the ringmaster brought Crystal to the circus, the tall lady protested. Crystal never really understood why, but it was clear that the tall lady hated her guts. At first Crystal felt rejected, but eventually the tall lady grew on her. Crystal began to see through the insults and recognized a friendly tone behind the cold facade. Crystal figured that banter was just the way the tall lady connected with people, and so she played along. Crystal had no choice but to comply. It was her job to serve the circus performers after all. But where would she find water? The goose had moved into the circus the same day as Crystal arrived. It was probably just a coincidence. What did fill Crystal with wonder, however, was how it got there, because she had never seen it fly. Most of the time, it just sat on the roof and gazed out over the horizon. Crystal imagined it was missing its family. Crystal was not too fond of how she looked in the mirror. All she could see was her flaws, so she'd rather not look at all. Crystal remembered when these posters were made. It was back in the day when twice as many performers lived in the circus. Among others, the painted picture showed the tamer, the mechanic, the twin line dancers and the daredevil. She used to get along well with these people. They were all so kind to her when she arrived at the circus. But now they were gone. 
And every day, Crystal asked herself what she was still doing at the circus. The clock was out of battery. Just another detail which made the circus feel frozen in time. Honey, the edible gold. The others wouldn't be happy if she took it all for herself. It took a lot of willpower, but Crystal managed to keep her paws off the jar. A sturdy bowl, great for serving hot stew. This was the bear woman. She was the most recent addition to the circus crew. Why she chose to join the circus at the time when most of the performers were quitting remained a mystery to Crystal. She was taciturn and had a habit of sleeping during the day. Crystal didn't mind though. In fact, she found their relationship rather liberating. The door to the stables was locked. Crystal wasn't allowed to enter without supervision. Crystal filled the bowl with stew, but this serving was not for her.
It hadn't rained for weeks. They were regular juggling pins. Crystal had no reason to take them. Crystal felt remorse over beating up the cat earlier, but she wasn't in the mood to go looking for it. Finding the recipient to the letter seemed like a more important task. After that, she could search for the cat if it was still missing. Crystal found it odd that the old generator was always running, despite the circus using very little electricity. The pylon was rusty and looked like it could collapse at any moment. Someone had just been in there and it smelled awful. The girl in the back was stronger. She was bold, cheerful and athletic. Let's just say Crystal admired strong girl. Perhaps, which was ironic, since all she wanted was for strong girl to like her. Better be a stranger than a fool, Crystal thought, and kept her distance. But it made her miserable.
Crystal reached out to hand over the letter, but she fumbled and dropped it. The letter was lying on the ground in front of them, but the next moment the wind grabbed hold of it and pushed it in under the tool shed door. There was no reason to panic. Crystal calmly walked over to the shed. But the door wouldn't budge. It was locked. So, after a series of unfortunate events, the letter was behind the locked tool shed door and the clown had been served the key for dinner. Crystal felt responsible to sort out this mess. So the key was gone. Crystal's stomach turned upside down just thinking about having to tell Strong Girl the bad news. But perhaps she didn't have to. It was getting late, and she still had to find the tall lady's cat before she could call it a day.
No, that's not how it went.